It's not every day a film from the 70s ends up on a Beyonce and Jay-Z tour poster, you know? Right. But that's exactly what happened with Tookie Buki. Wow. This 1973 Senegalese film, it's still sparking conversations decades later. Yeah, it's incredible. And we're going to figure out why. We've got articles, a film study guide. Oh, cool. Far Out Magazine, OK Player, even Wikipedia, BBC Culture, Criterion Collection. So we've got a lot to work with. They all agree Tukibuki Buki is more than just a film. It's like a cultural touchstone. Exactly. So are you ready to dive into this? Let's do it. All right. Tukibuki. Buki. It's about these lovers in Dakar, Senegal, Mori, and Anta. Okay. They're dreaming of escaping to Paris. You know, that classic idealized paradise. Yeah, that Western ideal. Exactly. The grass is always greener. Right. But what's really interesting is how the director, Mambati, visually represents this yearning, you know. Okay, how so? Mori's motorcycle, it's this powerful symbol throughout the film. Okay. And it's decked out with a bull's skull. Oh, wow. This really unexpected juxtaposition. Tradition, modernity. Mm -hmm. You can already see the complex themes the film is going to explore. Yeah, I'm picking up what you're putting down. And their journey to get to Paris. Anything but straightforward. They hustle, they scheme. Mambati doesn't shy away from showing how far they'll go. Interesting. And you can feel this disillusionment, you know, like it's simmering beneath the surface of post-colonial life in Dakar. Makes sense. It's like that tension between aspiration and reality. Exactly. And then there's the title itself, Tuki Buki. Which means... Journey of the Hyena. Journey of the Hyena. Okay. And the hyena in Senegalese folklore, it's not just a scavenger, right? Right. It's cunning, resourceful, uh, almost shamelessly ambitious. Oh, I see. So the title's like a hint. Right. Yeah, totally. Like Maury's character. There you go. He embodies that hyena spirit. He's driven, looking for that better life, even if it means bending a few rules. Exactly. But here's the thing about Tuki Buki. It's not a straightforward narrative. Oh. It's fragmented. Dreamlike, uh -huh. almost like we're stepping right into Mori and Anta's inner world. So it's more about their internal journeys. Exactly. The emotional landscape. Interesting. Less about the physical journey to Paris and more about this universal yearning, you know, for something more, something better. Yeah. But it also shows us the complexities, even the illusions wrapped up in those desires. Especially in a post-colonial world. Exactly. It yeah. makes you think about, like, the immigrant experience, right? Totally. That pulled toward the West. Yeah, that utopia. All the sacrifices, mm, trying to okay. fit in, but also hold on to where you come from. Tuki Buki gets that, all that tension. It doesn't shy away from how appealing the West can be. Paris, right. That's the symbol. Exactly, that freedom, those opportunities. But it's not about just getting there, like, physically. Right, right, there's more to it. It goes deeper. Like, right. what even is paradise? Good question. And what will you give up for it? That's the thing. It's so relevant, even now. People searching for something better, always. It's like that saying, the grass is always greener. Right. We chase an idea of a place, but it's never that simple in reality. And Tukipuki gets that. The messiness, yeah. it doesn't give you easy answers, which is more true to life, I guess. It's like looking in a shattered mirror, all these pieces reflecting those characters. It's fragmented, yeah. Surreal, even. And speaking of surreal... The soundtrack. Oh, yeah. Don't even get me started. Yeah. I mean, we've got traditional Senegalese music, and then Josephine Baker. Oh! Josephine Baker. No way. And no. a little American funk thrown in there. Wow. It's wild. <sighs> The sonic tapestry. How does he even blend those together? Right. Mumbadi, he's messing with us a little. Josephine Baker, she's the West, right? All that glamour. The epitome. But here she is, part of this African story. He's reclaiming that sound. Exactly. It's not just about terrorists anymore. It's about Africa absorbing these influences. Becoming something new. Yeah, and this was revolutionary at the time. It really was. African cinema back then, it was all about realism. Social issues. The political climate. But Mbeiti... He went for something totally different, more poetic, more dreamlike. He was an artist. And not afraid to break the mold. He mixed genres, pushed boundaries, created his own language with film. Love that. Which brings us back to Beyonce and Jay-Z, that tour poster, remember? Oh, yeah. The motorcycle, the bullhorns. Yeah. Total Tukibuki Buki vibes. Definitely a nod. But people had a lot to say about it. Of course. I mean, on the one hand, it's amazing, this Senegalese film. People are talking about it. New audience, right. Totally. Yeah. But then, was it the right kind of attention? There's always that question, was it homage or was it... Appropriation. Yeah. That line is so blurry sometimes. Mm -hmm. 
When you're inspired by another culture, are you honoring it or taking something from it? That's what makes Tukibuki so powerful even now. It makes uncomfortable. It does make you think. It's about who gets to tell these stories, the legacy of colonialism. It's all there in the film and in the way we talk about it today. It really makes you think about all that, doesn't it? Like all those questions about who owns a culture and how we appreciate art without, you know, taking it too far. Yeah, it's like Tikibuki predicted these conversations we're having. It's amazing how relevant it still is. And speaking of things that draw you in, can we talk about that soundtrack again? Oh man, this soundtrack. It's not just background music, right? It's like experiencing the character's emotions set to music. Totally, I mean, you've got Josephine Baker's Parisian jazz mm -hmm. right alongside these traditional Senegalese melodies. It's such a cool combo. Creates this atmosphere you can just get lost in. Yeah, like those two worlds are constantly bumping into each other, blending. It's so deliberate. It's like Mambody's saying something with that, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah. He's using sound to make you think differently. Like Josephine Baker, her music usually represents what, like the West, right? Totally. Those ideals, the glamour. But in Tukibuki, it means something different. It's part of this African story now. He's like reclaiming it. Exactly. It's not just about being drawn to Paris anymore. It's about like how those outside sounds mix with your own culture, what you grew up with. And what comes out of that. It's so cool. Right. It's messy and complicated. And Membody doesn't try to simplify it, which I love. You have to figure it out for yourself. Which is what makes it a great film, you know. Yeah. When you keep thinking about it. For sure. So as we wrap up here, what really stood out to you about Tukibuki? The visuals, those themes we keep coming back to, that amazing soundtrack. There's so much there. But I think for me, it's how relevant it still is today. It's like Mamadi was ahead of his time talking about identity, what it means to belong in a world still dealing with the effects of colonialism. It's all there. It sticks with you, right? It makes yeah. you question things, see the world a little differently. Absolutely. And speaking of questions, we wanted to leave you with one final thought to mull over. At the end of the film, Maury decides to stay in Dakar. What do you think that means? Ooh, good one. Is he rejecting his dream? Or is it more like he's going back to something real, you know? Something that's truly him deep down. That's the heart of it, right. Yeah. What do we choose and what does home really mean? And that's the power of Tukibuki. It sparks a conversation that goes way beyond the screen. So until next time, keep exploring, keep asking those tough questions, and keep diving deep into the things that fascinate you.